I'm going to do a little video on the unboxing of a Dragonfly BMS hot end. These are supposed to be a direct replacement for the Creality Ender 3, Ender 5, CR10. They run right around $55 to $60. They're a little bit cheaper than the Micro Swiss, a little bit more than the Gulf Coast. Uh, they claim to be made of better materials. Um, they're capable of reaching temperatures up to 500 Celsius. Let's see if I can outsmart the box here. Alright, well, apparently the box is smarter than I am, so we're just going to cut it. Comes with some handy little instructions for how to put it together. It says it's compatible with all filaments including PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, PP, PC, nylon, PEEK, PEI, and composite materials containing, containing abrasive additives. I don't usually run too many abrasive materials, but I have been running the Gulf Coast for a while, and I believe the max temp on that is 300. Uh, I, even after a PID tune, I, I have problems with it going higher than 260, so I figured I'd try one of these out. Comes with a pack of thermal grease, uh, wrenches for your nozzle change. Looks like there's a large wrench for. Yep. Came with a nozzle. Came with a 0 0.4 nozzle. wrench does not fit that nozzle. I bet it fits the heat brake. Yep. Alright, so you have one wrench for the heat block, one wrench for the heat brake. Uh, looks like you get an extra set of screws, a couple Allen wrenches, um, these really tiny black screws go up under here and hold everything together. Let's see if we can take it apart. I guess it's a good thing we checked. This was very loose. I wouldn't have mattered anyway. That screw was for the uh, heater cartridge, and that one was for the thermistor. This is an adapter. Uh, it looks like a pin, but there's a little tiny hole in the one end. And this slides into that hole so you can still use the glass bead thermostores if that's what you're currently running so that is pretty handy that you have the option of using more than one type of thermostore
It might not come apart while it's cold. We're gonna try. Oh, there it goes. All right, so this is a cone-shaped heat break. Um, as you can see, it was in there, and they're pretty firm. And I, I guess it just presses in, and the cap holds it in place, keeps it from coming out. They have another Dragonfly, a BMO Dragonfly, that looks more like the V6 hot end. And all of the lower parts are supposed to be the same. The only thing that's different on them is uh, this upper part. Like I said, this one mounts to the CR-10 style machines, and the V6 has the circular mount on the top. The core parts are mainly composed of copper alloy, which has the advantage of better heat conduction. Overall high temperature resistance up to 500 Celsius. Heat sink and heat break adopt conical surface fitting design, increasing heat dissipation. Low roughness of heat break. The inner hole roughness of the heat break. I'm, I'm not sure what that means, but 0 0.3, which allows for smoother filament movement. High printing precision and filament plugging. And if you look online, look at their website or whatever, they'll show some benches and stuff that were printed with uh, any other hot end versus theirs. Supposedly no changes made. I don't know if I have that much faith in it, but it, it does seem to be made pretty well. The real test will come when it's time to change nozzles see if uh, the cone starts spinning in there. That is my biggest pet peeve with the Micro Swiss and the Gulf Coast is when you go to do a, a nozzle change if you aren't holding on to the heat block tight enough it just spins right around. Let's see how heavy it is while we have it out. All right, we'll put it in grams. 15.615 grams. Versus a Gulf Coast hot end. I bought some different heat blocks for this Gulf Coast so I could use the screws and prevent it from spinning. Uh, the Gulf Coast is 12 grams. So it is a little bit heavier. I don't know how much of a difference you'll see though, uh, that small of a difference, even on direct drive. I know every little bit adds up, but so the one thing that I'm not sure about, they give you the adapter for the glass bead, but they don't have any set screw or anything to hold it in. Um, says it should first be put into the brass tube and the port should be sealed with a thermal conducting adhesive which is this pack of thermal grease that they include so that's one thing I'm not going to be real excited about is there's no set screw or anything to hold my glass bead in just some thermal grease 
I guess we'll just have to get a few hours on it. Uh, I do plan on installing this right after I finish my linear guide rail conversion. Since everything's apart, I'll, I have to do recalibration and tuning and everything then, so might as well do it all at once. We'll come back with a, another video of this actually running when I get around to installing it. But it's a Fadus Dragonfly BMS.